Hallelujah. We do extend greetings to all that Yah has called and elected according to his wisdom of all matters, that he is the one that elects, he is the one that calls, and he is the one that establish his nation, his people, that we are cohesive, we are one, Ichat, Yoshua Hamashiach. So it's a great blessing, Israel, to sit here tonight. I was thinking today how beautiful it is to simply enjoy water. If we're drinking, or you're able to bathe, what a great blessing it is, Yisra'ya'in, to enjoy the refreshing of water, how it revives you. And so above all things, I do Baruch ar Abba for the living water, which is Yoshua HaMashiach. I do want to teach tonight you, our friends that have joined us on the live broadcast for Keith's Day, simply scripture or the Torah being taught in the most simplistic form that we may understand the fullness of what Yah commands us and then we may know it by revelation of Yahshua HaMashiach. Every word that Yah speaks, it is Him. So it is vital to us to understand the depths of what He says. We cannot interpret things by our own cognitive consciousness or by our own intellectual knowledge of things. We must interpret it by Torah. We must see the line, line upon line, line precept upon precept, and it must be scattered abroad throughout the Torah. These are great gems, and that's why Yah has hidden them from the wise of this world, from the prudent of this world. And he reveals it unto the simple ones, the babes of Yisrael. You must search out the depths of Torah in order to understand the depth of the mind of Yah and the depths of Yahshua HaMashiach. I want to teach tonight, I don't know how to title this, but somewhere between now and when I end, we will find that resolution because it is vitally important to understand Yisra'i'im. I would have begun here in the reading of the Nobi the prophet, Yeshaya Isaiah, as he speaks in the 50th chapter, I would have begun reading at verse 4. This is a prophecy, and in this prophecy we see the first person, Yoshua HaMashiach, speaking. Isaiah chapter 50, verse 4. This is the exuding of the great Mashiach, Yoshua, and the great agonies that he would endure for the sake of the nation. So the Torah says by the writing of the Nobi the prophet, Isaiah chapter 50 verse 4, it says that the sovereign, almighty Yahweh, he is accountable to no man. No one is going to inspect him. No one is going to reveal any flaws in him because they found no sins in Yorkshire HaMashiach. So the sovereign Yahweh, he emphatically states, has nothing. He has given me a lotion. He has granted. He has permitted. He is the one that has ordained that I may have the tongue of the learned. He said, I have the tongue of the lemul, a man that is learned, man that has scholarship. He has been taught. He is a disciple, and he is a disciplined man. His ways are ordered by Almighty Yahweh. That's why we must mark a man that is Tomim. For the end of that man, that person is Shalom. We discount what Yah says because we have everything. And we do not honor anything that supersedes us. So Yah has given Yahshua the tongue 
of a limud, a learned man, a taught one, one that is disciplined by the understanding of Torah. And this is why he gave him that tongue and that wisdom. Why? That I should yada, I should know, without exception, how to speak a word, a daba, a promise of Yah, not just a word, but it is in associate, association with uh, the promises. That I will know how to speak a daba, which is the promise, the promises of Yah, speak a word in season to him that is weary. That's important. And to the one that is weary. And as the old ones would state that I am weary and I am tired, but I press on. Yes. Uh, there has been a toil in my labor. I have labored tremendously. The opposition of hell. You had to give him the tongue of the learned. So that he would know how to oppose, to oppose uh, those spirits uh, that would rise up against him, this is Joshua speaking, uh, when he was at the ultimate uh, action that Yah called him and purposed him for, that he would die for the house uh, of Yisrael. He said that I would know how to speak a word uh, to those that are Yahaf, those that are fatigued and they faint in hearts, those that have labored and there is no intensity that they have the confidence that is needed in the word of Yah. We get weary, but there is a simple resolution to our weariness, Yisrael. It is not complex, and the answers are in the book. That's why he was given the tongue, the Loshon, of a learned, a limut, a man that had knowledge and wisdom, so that he would be able to speak a word to him that is weary. Those that are in great agony of fatigue, their hearts faint and their minds began to faint, and they become unstable with doubt and fears, and they become impatient because they don't and they do not allow the word of Yah to be the final resolution for their lives. So he has given me this wisdom, this understanding to speak a word to him that is weary. It says that we as a nation, we awaken or we waken morning by morning. We get up morning by morning. And yet it is only one word that must speak to us daily. And that is the living power of Torah. We awaken morning by morning. He wakens my eyes. My ears, my ozen to hear as the learned. Suleiman is a learned man. His ears are awakened when he hears a man speak with the magnitude of Yah's wisdom and the power of the testimony of Yahshua is evident in that man because he speaks a word to the weary. It's easy for us to become faint of hearts. We get so weary we began to doubt Yah. We don't have confidence in Him. We began to uh, seek out remedies, not according to Torah, but according to our own applications uh, of life. Uh, and none of them will work. He has given that unto Yahshua. He is the sure words uh, for us. And that word speaks to us uh, when we are weary. The word of Yah will speak to us uh, when we are la'a, when we are faint, uh, and when we have toil and labor and our mind uh, is fatigued, uh, we are impatient, uh, and we have no resolution at all. Uh, it is the power of the learned, Yoshua, that speaks unto the nation of Yisrael. He is the one that speaks. But he says this, in the fifth verse of that chapter, he says, The sovereign Yah, this is important, Yisra'ya, he has opened, he has 
He has opened, he said, uh, he has opened my eyes, he has opened my ears, that's what Patach is, that we may be able to grasp and understand what the one that is learned will speak. We will understand what scriptures speak. We will understand the chitve, the multiples, the chatuv, the singular one that will speak unto us, Yisrael. He has opened my ears, and because he opened my ears, he said, I will not be rebellious. I will not mara. I will not go aside from what Yah speaks to me. I will not try to find and choose another way. That I will not rebel, and this is the vital point here, neither turn away back. Now that's important, because we often turn away from Torah when we are weary, when we are tired, uh, when our minds faint, uh, we turn away from Torah. So he has opened up his understanding as a limud, a learned man, uh, that he may speak to us. We are the weary ones. That he may speak to us tonight. We are the ones that are weary. And if we do not allow him to open up our understanding. Then we will turn back. I, I want to show us a perfect example of that in the book of Lucas. Let's turn there quickly. The book of Luke chapter 24. There are a few verses I want to read. After the resurrection of Yoshua HaMashiach, we know that before he was taken to the stake, that they all turned away. They all turned away back. And they did not walk with him. They turned away from the word. That's why the prophecy here, I will conclude this in Isaiah 15, but I want to read something out of the writing of Lucas. Luke chapter 24, the two verses here I want to read. Verse, verses 30, 30 through 32. It says this, And it came to pass as Yoshua as, uh, came to pass as he sat at meat with them, he took the bread that they had, and he barach it, and he break it, and then he gave it to them. That was his body. He gave them that life of Torah, his body. It says, uh, when he gave it to them, and their eyes were potak. See, their eyes were open. Our eyes will never be open unless we allow him uh, this word, the Torah, the living Torah of Yah, to speak to us by the one that is learned. Because we will turn back. They all had turned back on him before this time. They had all ventured to do their own thing. And so when he gave them the living bread, give us this day, Nathan, our daily lechem, the bread of life. Give us daily this bread that sustains us. Uh, and that is the word that he speaks uh, unto the la'ah, the heart that is weary. And the mind that is weary. The mind uh, that toils and labor in the senseless things of life. Uh, and they are captivated by it. We must allow our minds to be open to the living Torah of Yah. It says now when he did this... Uh, their eyes were open, and only then did they know they knew him. Only did, then did they recognize Yeshua HaMashiach. They knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. He opened up their minds, their labor, their understanding in the natural and the physical, the spiritual as well, that they would know him. They will know him. And so he opens our eyes tonight by speaking to our weary ways uh, that we will know that he is the one that feeds us this living bread. Uh, we're not going to get bread by any other source but by Yeshua 
Hamashiach. It comes no other way. And it says in the 45th verse of the same chapter, I want to read this in this 45th verse of this chapter. Chapter. Verse 44 first. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spoke unto you while I was with, with, yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which was written in the Torah of Moshe, in the Naviim of the prophets, in the Psalms of the Helium concerning me. Everything concerning me must be fulfilled. We are the body of Yahshua. So everything concerning us must be fulfilled. Many are the affliction. But there's a resolution in the midst of our great afflictions that will cause us not to be weary. And I want to touch on those things tonight, Yisrael. And it says in verse 45, Then he opened up their eyes that they would know him. You understand now? Then he opened he their understanding that they might understand He opened up their understanding there that they may understand what the scripture says, what the Torah says, what the prophet says, what David said. He opened up their understanding that they may understand. And when Yah opens up our understanding, there is an action that follows us, Yisrael. I will show you that quite vividly in the writings of Ashleshiam, in the Acts of the Apostles here. Hallelujah. Acts 16, quickly. The writings of the Ashleshiam, Acts chapter 16. There's one verse I want to read here. Hallelujah. Look what it says here. Acts 16, verse 14. And a certain woman of Lydia, she was a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, which Shecha, she worshipped the Most High. Acts chapter 16, verse 14. She was one that was embellished in the process of honoring Almighty Yahweh, which worshipped Yah, heard us. Her ears were not quite open, but she heard the knowledge and understanding uh, of Kitve. Then he opened their understanding uh, that they may understand uh, Torah. Heard us. Uh, she heard this word, uh, and it says, when she heard it, whose life, whose heart Almighty Yah opened. Her heart, Yahweh, opened her hearts. Potach. Whose hearts, Almighty Yahweh, opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken by Shaul. See, when Yah opens your heart, He opens your mind in the state of your weariness, uh, you will attend unto the things. Uh, that the scriptures, that Torah opens up unto you. You're not concerned with attending unto the things of the natural order. You're concerned with those things that pleases the Most High Yah. One more verse the next. And when she was immersed at her household, she besought us, saying, if you have judged me to be faithful unto Almighty Yahweh, come into my bed, my house, and abide here. And she constrained it us to do so. You understand? It is one thing that when our hearts and our minds are open, we are constrained to do what Yah commands us to do. We don't have to be convinced. We don't turn away Yisrael. That's why the gems of Torah, they're hidden from a mind that is natural and carnal uh, uh, and seeks after those natural things. Uh, we must be transformed by the conformity uh, of this Torah of Almighty Yah. He opened up her heart. He opened her hearts. 
la Torah and the things that Shaul said they were commendable unto her. And then her worship unto Yah, her Shaha was thorough. And that's why Yahshua says here in Yeshua in Isaiah that uh, Yah has given me a tongue of the learned. I know this is Yahshua. I know this is him speaking in the first person because we look at verse 6 of Isaiah 50. He said, I gave my back to the smiters. Is that not Yahshua? Yeah. I gave my back to the smiters. I gave my face, my cheek to them that plucked off my hair. Now, I will convince or speak to all young men that are able to grow the hair on their face to let it grow. Because you're sure had it. I will convince all young men that are able to grow a beard, let it grow. You grow the hair on your face. You know something is wrong with us being commanded to shave. And when we search Torah, we find in the house of Potiphar, when Yosef was in the prison, that is the first time it mentions of one shaven. And they shaved him and they cleaned him up that he may go into the house of his wicked slave master that Yah had given him favor with Yisra'ya'i. And he gave his cheek and so on your cheek, he gave his cheek and they plucked off the hair. Now that's what the book says. Now the book says that. They pulled the hair off of his face. He plucked, they plucked off his hair, off my face. He said, I hear not my face from the shame and the spittle as they spat in my face this is Yoshua speaking. Now, if he endured this, he certainly has the word to speak to us. If he was not weary that he gave up and turned back, that he was rebellious, then certainly we can keep the commands of Yah and do all. He commands us, Yisrael. We need a sure word, as the old folks would say. We need Yoshua to speak into our weariness to confirm to confirm all things by the spoken word hallelujah there is no other assurance in life but Yahshua HaMashiach in the midst of great battles he is the tree the Ezra he is the tree of Chayil of high he is a tree of life there is no other one you cannot get life from no other tree Yahshua and Ezra the prophet, the messenger of Yah in 4th Ezra, hear this carefully. I want us to hear. We need to, to train ourselves to hear and to be attentive unto Yah. He says this. He speaks in Ezra chapter 2 verse 12. He says the tree of life shall give us the ornament of a sweet fragrance. There's nothing like a sweet fragrance to the nostrils, the soothing. And so that's what Yahshua is. He is the ointment of a sweet, promising fragrance that saturates us and flows in our minds and all through our bodies that, that, that we get excited about him. That's the power of the word of Yah. That's the power of his word. Hallelujah. The sweet fragrance, and they shall neither toil, who we get the smell in our hearts right. We began to taste and see how tough he is. He say, we shall neither, we shall neither toil labor with such intensity. And he says, neither nor shall we become, uh, we will not become weary. We shall not be weary. We will not become weary. We are becoming weary because we don't like the ointment. We don't like the fragrance of the smell and the taste of the Torah of Almighty Yah. 
This is what the prophet, the messenger of Yah said. Uh, he said, and they shall not and uh, nor become weary. They shall not toil nor become uh, uh, they will not be impatient they will not become so grievous uh, and their hearts will not be grieved Israel the solution to all things are in this book it is not some kind of mystical sprinkling of some dust that's going to fall that's why if we read that again in Yeshua he says here that he has given me a tongue of a Lemuel, the learned. Why? That I should know to speak a word in due season to him that is weary. And then he says, when the sovereign has opened my ears, uh, and I was not rebellious, you will not rebel. Uh, not only will you not rebel, uh, you will not turn away from the diction and the dictates of Yah. You will not turn away from that. You become a fragrance, Yeshua does to our nostrils, uh, and once we began to embrace the sweetness of the great smell, we don't have to toil. We won't grow weary. And we're growing weary daily and constantly, all the time. Because as they would say, how is the old proverb, wake up and smell the coffee or smell the roses or one of those, I, I don't know. Smell the roses, wake up and smell the roses. Is that how it goes? I don't know how it goes. And so we smell the intense beauty of the fragrance of the rose. That's nothing like it. It doesn't make us weary. It's that we're reminded of that. Ah, oh, it smells so wonderful. It smells so pleasant. And when you smell it, always bring about that great sensation to us. That's your show. He is the tree of life. He is that tree. He is the tree of life. He is the Ezra of life. He is the tree of life. He is the sweet fragrance of Yah. And when we smell him, we will not, Yisrael, Il began to toil and labor in our flesh. And neither will we grow weary. We won't, we will not grow weary at all. He also makes a statement, Ezra, in the second chapter, 4th Ezra, verse 27. In essence, he commands us and instructs us that we as a nation of people, we're going to have those little bumps in the road. But he commands us to press on in the barrel of life. We must press on. So he makes this profound statement in 4th Ezra, chapter 2, verse 27. He tells us, simply be not weary or anxious. You don't have to be weary. You don't have to be, you don't have to be offended or so exhausted that you're tired of everything. And those that say, I throw my head, I'm just tired of it. I'm tired of it all. That's a weary man. That's a woman that is quite weary. They just throw up their hands, say, I'm tired of it. That's it. I'm exhausted. I am tired. No more, no more, no more, no more. You have not tasted the sweet word of Yah. You have not embraced the promises of Almighty God. That's why you throw up your hands. That's why you turn back and away. You don't want to hear the word now because that's it. That's the final conclusion. That's it. I'm exhausted. That's it. He gives us great comforts. Be not weary or anxious. Why? For when the day of tribulation and the time of anguish, great pain, when they come, he said, when this enter in, when this bow, he said, others, they're going to be gone to weep and cry. Others shall weep. And they're going to be of great pains and sorrow. They're going to be great, filled with sorrows. He said, but you, but you, but you. 
shall be rejoiced and you shall have abundance. Do you understand? And we allow some circumstance to cause us to become weary that we labor and we began to turn away from the Torah. We turn away from prayer. We turn away from the words. We turn away from everything that is of Yah. We began to turn away. He said, don't be weary and don't get anxious because there is a sarah, a trial, a great pain and agony. And those shall enter in with the agonies and they're weary, they're anxious, they're going to be sorrowful, they're going to cry, they're going to weep with great sorrow. He said, but you shall be in rejoicing. You're going to sing unto y'all with great rejoicing. I believe that. I have nothing else to look forward to in this life. I don't look for home. I look for one whose building maker is somebody. I'm not trying to get a Cadillac. I'm not trying to get a bank account. I want this to be full in me. This is my life. I live for this and that's the truth. This is my life. So don't be weary. And don't get anxious about nothing. And so when the great agonies of your come, you will know who sent them. Can I read a little farther? Uh, well, well, we're not familiar with the book of Ezra. What? We're familiar with Dawid and Tehillim, Psalms. Psalms 68 and 8. There is no one that can deliver us in the midst of all of our great agonies. Psalm 68 verse 8. Like Yah. His word delivers us. Yoshua is that word that brings the liberation of Almighty Yah. David cried unto Yah. He said, I need some confirmation here in Tehillim 68 and verse 8. It says that the earth shook. It says, and the Shemayim also drooped. It was not tough. The heavens spoke. The heavens prophesied. And the days our forefathers could read and hear from the heavens. They could hear the rain in the distance. They knew when the winter time was coming. And that was a fact. He says that the heavens also drooped. He says, at the presence of Almighty Yahweh. Even Sinai itself was moved out of the presence of Yah, the sovereign master of Yisrael. He says in verse 9. You, O Yahweh, you did send a plentiful rain. He sent the rain. He has sent the rain of his Ruach for one reason. Listen, Yisrael. Listen closely, closely to what this, this said. Whereby you sent the rain and it was plentiful. For what reason? You did that to whom to confirm, to establish your inheritance. When it was weary, when we had no patience, when we, was, we were exhausted, he sends rain tonight. He sends a word that is, uh, that is alive. That's what Yah does, Israel, for what? To confirm, to confirm, to to make us stable, to establish us, to give us that great assurance. He sends the rain. Send down the rain, yeah? He sends the rain of the Ruach Kodesh that he may confirm what? It says not a heritage, but his heritage. His heritage. His inheritance. It's his inheritance. He owns everything, yeah? But we are the inheritance of Almighty Yah. He sends this. When we are weary, he sends a word to confirm. We are the inheritance of Almighty Yah. That we don't become so weary, we become exhausted. We began to remove ourselves away from Yah. We began to remove our mind away from Torah. We don't want to hear it. There's not a sweet fragrance of Torah. 
that oozes from our minds. We don't want to hear the Lemur. We don't want to hear the learned man that he may speak to us uh, in the midst of our weariness. And that's what you are sure of this word. And this is your sure. He is the word of Yah. This is what he speak. And this is what he spoke unto thy weed. That he may confirm. We're weary. So he sends the abundance of rain. He sends the rain of encouragement, rebuke. He sends the rain, rain of chastisement and his greater hava. He sends the rain of his musa, his counsel, and also his tikva, the promises uh, that we can walk in. That's why he sends the rain. He gave us the example here when the earth shook and sunny eye uh, and the great force of Yah's spoken word uh, that the earth trembled and the mountains bowed down. Uh, he did all that that he may send the rain. He may send the refreshing. That's what rain does. Uh, it revitalizes. It refreshes. Uh, it, 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 it nurtures. Uh, and he calls growth. That's what rain does. So he sends the rain that he may open up our minds and our hearts, uh, that we may understand the power of Yahshua HaMashiach. We have no power, strength, or resolution within ourselves. It is Almighty Yahweh that does it, Yisrael. Hallelujah. So he sends the rain tonight. He sends the rain down upon your agonies and your weariness. I'll tell you, it's nothing like I've seen over these many years you Trying to grow food around here, I've seen where we didn't have rain for three months and a half, not a drizzle. And when the rain come, there were times I would sit in my office over here, and it seemed as though that the clouds and the heavens were breaking open. And I would sit, and I would say, Yah, you will be done, but I tell you what, if you send the rain down, I'm going to run out of this place. I'm going to dance in the rain. And I remember one day that the heavens broke and the rain began to fall. I was happy because you were weary of that, the dust in the garden and you're laboring in the midst of that and you're talking about one that rejoice. He sends the rain. He sends the Maya. He sends the living water, the spring of life, Yeshua. He sends that to confirm to us that are weary that we are his inheritance. We, a man like Jai, weed in the midst of all of his agony, his enemies surrounded him on every side. He's crying out to Yah in the midst of the great agonies uh, of his perplexities. Uh, and Yah sends the word of the Nobi, the prophet. He sends uh, the measure of his great kindness and concern unto Daweed. We need to hear from him. And the only way we're going to hear from him, we must listen to Yahshua. Hamashiach. He is this. This book is written of him. He came in the volume of this book, no other book, but this book, this book. Can I proceed a little farther? Well, I am. He has confirmed his heritage, his inheritance. Hallelujah. Again, in the writing of Ezra, this time in third Ezra, the times that we must, as Ezra, in the midst of this tremendous vortex with Yah, that he was caught up. Yah began to show him things, visions, wisdom of that which shall be, which shall come to pass. And there were things that were startling to him. As the old folks would say, you better be careful what you ask for. That was a proverb. I would hear them say that. Baby, you better be careful what you ask for. You better be careful what you ask for. <clears throat> and so in the midst of all of this great enrapturing by Yah, he wanted to understand 
a particular vision and knowledge of the matter. And he begins the dialogue here in Ezra with the Melach, the messenger of Yah, 3rd Ezra, in chapter 12, verse 4. He says, Lo, this you have done to me, and that you search out the ways of the highest. This is the Melach. You're searching out the ways of Yah. You can't find the ways of Yah. There is no end. He gives us a government of laws and order in this book. And this book is difficult for us uh, to maintain. He's given us enough to maintain us. Uh, and there are folks, I want to go higher. When you get to this understanding and wisdom, uh, you are high, believe me, above all men. So what have you done to me um, that uh, you desire the ways of the most high? He says in verse 5, Lo, this is what he said, Ezra. He says, I am weary in my mind. I cannot function. I cannot think right. I'm weary in my mind. He said, and because I'm weary, I'm very weak. I'm very dull. I'm very only. I'm very poor. I'm very weak. He says, in my Ruach, and that's our state. We are weary, we are weak, and our Ruach, the word doesn't speak to us. Because we are busy speaking to us. It is our own mind speaking. We're not allowing the resolution of a living power to bring about the resolution in our lives. You cannot obfuscate what your responsibilities are. I don't care if you're man, woman, child, husband, wife, it makes no difference who you are. The command is equal. The command unto her is no different than the command unto me. It is equal. He is not unfair. He is not unjust. He does all things righteous. He says, not only am I weary, how many folks will say that? I'm weak. Well, I'm strong like you. No. Well, if you're strong like me, then I know you're weak then. Let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich. Oh. Well, I've got a knowledge of the book. You have nothing. Stop it. He said, not only am I weary in my labor, in my mind. He did not say, I am weak. He said, I am rabbi. I'm very, I'm very weak in my ruach. He says, and there's little, me oh, little, koach, little strength there in me. How many would honestly testify of the state like that? He said, for the great fear, the great fear wherein I was afflicted this night. Well, I don't believe that God would afflict us. Well, we're going to find out what, why he afflicts us. And why we will not grow weary, even in our afflictions. He says, therefore, O Maria, I beg of you, you're the great most high, that Yahweh will comfort me to the end. That he will be my Raham. He will come for me all the way to the midst of all of this great agony and the great battle. Unto the end of this resolution. He says in verse 7. And I said, this is what he said, Yahweh, the bear rule. If I have found the great favor of the free unmerited kindness... Favor before your sight. And he says, and if I am justified, if I'm a just man, you're sure. If I'm a just man with you before many others, and if my prayer indeed has come up before your poor name, your face, he says to Yah, comfort me. In the midst of all of your weary deeds and action, he asked Yah to comfort Raham. Comfort me, Yah. Comfort me. Then. And then he says, 
Show unto your Abadim, your servant, the interpretation, the interpretation and plain difference of this fearful vision that you may perfectly comfort my nephesh. They all left your shore and they went their own way and they were sitting at meat eating. And he came. They didn't even know who he was. They were weary and discomforted. Then he gave them the bread, his body. They had eaten before he died, but they were not serious. I've said this of all the years. We think that Pesach and the modem of Yah, of something that is fictitious and false, has no relevance. But we're fools. And I've watched every year those that sit and eat, and I watch them die. You can say what you want to. You can try to justify or give some reason. They all abandoned Yahshua. They left him. They were weary. That's why they were sitting there. They had nothing to do. Nothing. Because they were given unto Almighty Yah. He had sealed them in the heart of Yahshua. Then he opened their understanding, their minds, that they would know who he is. You need a man that is Lemud, a learned man, that will teach us and feed us, that we may understand who he is, Yisrael. You can try to do it in your own independent way. It's amazing. You don't perform an independent surgery on you. You don't do those things that pertain to your biological physicality, do you? No, you don't do that. But when it comes to that which is more important than that, when it comes to that which is more important than that, we have disdain for the order of Almighty Yah. He says, I will give you men of my nature. I will give you men after mine heart. They shall raw. They shall feed you with knowledge. It's important to have knowledge. And being below understanding. Those men left Yahshua. They had no knowledge or understanding uh, of the great power of whom they were, the heritage or the inheritance, inheritance of Yah, until he opened their understanding. When he gave them bread, uh, they knew him then. That's him. And then when he, he left them, and then they were in doubt, they wondered, what is this? And then what he did, uh, he came back and then he opened up their understanding to Torah. He opened up their understanding to Torah. And when he did that, they were not weary. And they all became martyrs and they gave their lives for the cause of the afflictions. That the same afflictions that Yoshua suffered we're going to suffer them in this body, Yisrael. We're going to suffer them. The rejection, we're going to be negated uh, and we're going to be denounced and ostracized. That's a fact. And if you're a coward, you might as well go home. Go home to your hell house because that's where you're going. And that's a fact. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Weary, I'm weak. Just open up your truth. You understand, he said, make the vision known. To them, Yahshua was a spirit, a ruach, touch from us. Ruach has not flesh and bones. Give me something to eat. That should be our desire all the time. Feed me as that we eat until I want no more. Just feed me. And when you don't want no more, something is wrong with you. Teach me the wisdom of Torah, yeah. Show me the way. Give me understanding. Hallelujah. 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 Hear this. This is a question that we all must ponder and ask ourselves. Hallelujah. Why am I so weary? What is my problem? What is the reason that I toil so? 
This is the question we must ask ourselves in Bikaya, the book of Micah. In chapter 6, in two verses here, we must ask ourselves this. You tell me what Yah caused us to experience that make us weary? I don't feel no ways tired come too far from where I started from. He brought me from this morning to this hour. You know, when I, when I come over here in the morning, I, I don't care what distractions. Uh, you know, oh, I, I, I'm down here this morning praying, and all of a sudden I hear this breathing out my neck in this, whoa, start to bust his head. Don't do me like that, dog. But in my initial, every time I pray, you a vile, wretched, wicked thing that measure up to nothing. Help me. It is a constant dealing with me. I can't pray for her until I get it right with me. And then I pray for the people of Yah. Yah said, I want to ask you a question. You question me. He says in Micaiah chapter 6, verse 2, He commands to Shemach you, O mountains. Yah has a controversy. And you strong fountains, the foundations of the earth. For Yah has a problem with us. We're his people. Oh, I'm just so weary. I get weary every day. I get weary being around you. I'm so weary, weary, weary. He said, I got a problem with you. And he will plead, he will ask us. And this is the question he asks us. We better ask ourselves this question. He says, my people, what have I done to you? Now that's profound. What have I done to you? And he woke me up this morning. And he started me on my way. There's nothing more blessed to me than a beautiful night's sleep at night. And I get up in the morning and I'm revived. I was telling Zakim, this morning, last night, I was so energized and had such energy in me, I, I didn't go to bed until midnight. Thinking about the work, seeing what must be done, how to set things in motion. And the only reason I didn't get up and start working last night because I said, boy, sit down and rest. But in the midst of all of that, those five hours of sleep I got, they were so restful and so full of Great, you know, I sleep so well. And I wake up, I say, I bless you so much. You let me sleep. And I, hallelujah. I don't toss, I don't turn. I just, I just sleep. I don't wake up for nothing. I don't. How sweet. He gave me sweet rest. And I sleep well. That's important to me. Don't have no money. I don't have any money. Send an offering. Yah says, I got a controversy. I got a controversy with you, my people. What has he done to you? Please tell me. He asked the question. What have I done to you? We charge him foolishly. And not only does he ask, what have I done to you? He says, swear in, tell me where I have wearied you. I've made you weary. You tell me serving Yah makes you weary? You tell me your trials make you weary, a little pain, a little affliction make you weary? He said, where in, tell me, where in have I wearied you? Allah, I've exhausted you beyond measure. 
I've taken everything you got. I made you so impatient that you have nothing in your heart that relates to the promises that I promised unto my nation. Tell me, he said, how, what have I done to you to make you weary of me? What has he done? He woke us all up. He put us to sleep uh, through the channels of death last night, uh, and we're awakened this morning. Hallelujah. He gave us sweet rest. He said, what have I done? I got a problem with you. Tell me where I've made you weary. That little affliction, we get worried because there's something vitally missing from our hearts. I'll show you what's missing. He says, wherein have I wearied you? He said, testify against me. Let it be known. Tell me. I know everything, but I want your mouth to confess it. I know that there is nothing that by chance that happened, for we know that all things cold, everything worked for the top, for the excellent of them that love Yah, and they which are called according uh, to the purpose of Yah. So you tell me, you're weary because of that, that trial and that affliction, that small measure? Where has Yah wearied us? Why are we so weary? What has He done or required of us that we get weary? There are folks that Work for a job 40 years and never miss a day. And they're never weary. They go to work every day. Every single day they go to work. What has Yah done to us, you particularly, that you're weary? That you don't want to be your brother's keeper, your a hope. Okay, you don't want to be their keeper. What has he done that he has wearied us? You're so exhausted you have no energy for him. What has he done to us? He's got a problem with us. When he's given us a living promise in Yoshua, and we discount that he's opened up our understanding to Torah, he got a problem with us, Yisrael. And that's for real. Well, you said you would tell us, as Zachim Benjamin would say, the problem that constantly persists that we are weary, we're exhausted, we have no strength, we're impatient, we faint at the smallest of circumstance. What is the element that's missing from us? I want to show you a man that was a, called a ra'a, a friend of Yah. His name was Abraham. I, I don't think that any writing in Torah speaks as well as what this speaks in the book of Jubilee. Now, I, I'm a student. I'm not a master in the writings of Jubilee. Jubilee 1, 17. I'm not a master of anything. I, I don't think the eloquency the execution of this katuv speaks more profoundly than this of Abraham. It says in the writings of Jubilees, chapter 17 and verse 18, one verse, Abraham, he endured in the promises of Almighty Yahweh, and he was not weary. Listen to what it says. And in everything wherein Almighty Yahweh, listen to what he said, had tried him. Sarah. He tests him. His granny would say, he tests him. He tests him. He caused him to go through the fire. He said in everything that Almighty Yahweh tried him, Abraham, he was found faithful. We missed that part. He was found faithful. You see that? He was found faithful. And his nephesh was not impatient. He was not weary. He was not la because we are not faithful. 
We find ourselves weary. Trial or test comes not to prove you, but to show you who he is. He was found faithful. It says, Jubilee 17, 18. And in everything wherein Yahweh had tried. He is the one that try us. I can't try you. He is the one that try you. Tried him, Abraham. He was found faithful. He was committed. He had confidence. He was sure that it was all under control. It was in the master's hand. And his nephesh, his being, was not weary. He was not, uh, he was not impatient with Yah. And listen to this, though. And not only that, and he was not slow. He was not a sloth. He was not slow. He was not slow. He was not slow to act upon the promises of the word of Yah. He was not slow. Well, I know what it says, but I, 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 I don't know what to do now. He was not slow to us uh, to fashion himself according to what Yah has said. Why? For he was faithful. I like the, the last part of this. He was faithful, and it says, and he was a lover of Almighty Yahweh. Now that's, that's a statement. He was a lover, and he was a lover of Yahweh. He had him in his mind, his heart, his bosom. He did not grow weary. We grow weary because Yahshua is not our lover. I said we grow weary because Yahshua is not our lover. Yah trot Avraham. And I tell you, my friends, he's going to try us as well. We must be found faithful. We must be found lovers of Yah. You will not grow weary. That one bit at all. You will not get tired. You will not be so exhausted. You will not say, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. How many have said that? And yet they're not sick of their own sins and their corruption. They're not sick of their wicked ways, but they're sick of me. He was the love of Yahweh. We must become lovers of Yahweh. We must be faithful. We can't be drugstore pretenders, CVS, imitations, generic brand. This is the real deal here. He was a lover of Yah. He loved him. He was a lover of Almighty Yahweh. He counted him faithful. He didn't charge him foolishly. And we're guilty of that. We charge you off foolishly. From our own foolish minds, we charge him that way, and it's wrong. He has not wearied us. He has not made it weary for us. In the midst of all of our trials, we have a sure word that comforts us. We have a sure testimony, and you're sure is that. That's our testimony. He was in the belly there three days and three nights. And by that Ruach, the living power, Yah is Ruach, he raised him up. He's going to get me up if I walk out of here before the time. He's going to raise me up. That's a fact. That is a fact. Hallelujah. 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 He was a lover of Almighty Yahweh. He was faithful and he was a lover. We cannot begin to murmur and mutter and complain about some of the pains that we endure. When I see the world that is awash in great agony and that we had enemies on every side, so he speaks 
of the great distress that he had encountered here in Tehillim 69.1. He says unto Yah, Yahshua, deliver, break the captivity, deliver me, almighty Yahweh. He says, for the waters, Psalm 69.1, he says, for the waters are come up into my nephesh, my being. He said, I sink in the deep dirt mire where there is no standing. I have ventured into the great deep waters of where the floods overflow me. I'm flooded with so many things. My emotions, my feelings, and all these things. He says, I'm weary. I am yeah, I have toil and labor. I am weary of my crying. My throat is dry and my eyes fell. They fell. But he said something here that is the catalyst of all of his despair. He says, I wait. I wait. See, that's our problem. We don't know how to wait. He said, although I'm weary, my throat is dry, I have, I have labored in tears and agony. He said, but in the midst of all of that, where else do I go? He said, I just simply, I wait. I wait. I wait for my sovereign master, Yahweh, because he's going to answer just wait. We must learn how to wait and be uh, and be patient with all money, Yahweh, Yisrael. Yah. In the midst of all of our agonies, there is only one thing, uh, and there's one medicine for us. I read that on Shabbat. I want to read it again. From Shirak, here's the medicine for us not growing weary, and we won't grow weary. Shirak chapter 43, one verse I want to read. Verse 30, he says, When you praise Almighty Yah, exalt him as much as you can. Pour out. Let it flow, Yisrael. Why? For he will surpass even that. You think what you gave to him, he's greater than that. When you exalt him, put forth all, not some. You put forth all of your, your strength and do not grow weary. For you cannot praise him enough. You won't get weary. We thank him. I thank you for the air that I'm breathing. I, if I had 10,000 tongues, that we said I could not. Baruch, I could not. Barach, I cannot praise him enough. Well, I got one tongue. And so I will take that one tongue. And I will esteem and exalt him. And I will not get weary in doing that. Because you know that. In the midst of all of our cataclysmic mayhem, he is there. Now, he is on time. Every time. No, he comes on time. No, he comes on time. Those said he may not come when you want to. No, he's on time. He's on time. And so it, we esteem him. We will not, don't, don't, even, you, don't even allow yourself to get weary. We will not, uh, we will not be exhausted. We will not say you got to do this over and over and over all the time, every day. You won't get exhausted. But when it's weary, they get, I'm sick of this. All I do, come home and clean house and cook, I take care of you. That's all I do. All I do is go to work and pay me. That's all I do. Well, what else are you going to do? There's one thing that I don't do is complain. No, son. I'm alive today. I got breads. You know the lady that works for FedEx? I said to her one time, I said, now the speed limit is out there. Don't drive 15 miles an hour, you do 10. 
because I had called the corporation on those that fly in here. I will always give them a warning as I give you this warning. Don't do it again. Now, if you hit someone here, we're going to sue you. Slow down when you come in here. They're going to take you about five seconds longer to get there. I don't play with any. I don't care who you are. And so I know when she comes in because she's going to do eight miles an hour because they know of me. I don't give it UPS, FedEx, all of them. I give you this chance, my friend, don't come again. Oh, man, no, no. Oh, oh yes, sir. So she says to me today, she say, every time I, every, you work all the time. Well, she works all the time. Nah, she works all the time. Don't even see her children off. She has to get up. And I said to her, you, she says, this is a large place. So I, I just gave her a little walk around. She said, this is just so beautiful. She said, you know what? We have learned to be selfish. We don't really care about nobody. And that's just the truth. Nobody cares about anyone. Everybody is selfish. I say, that is what we've tried to do here. It tried to break that selfish greed and lust. Few have the desire to be affectionate and kind to one another. It's me, myself, and I. We don't give a damn. I said that way. And so when I took her around, she said, thank you. She always, she always tell me, this is such a peaceful place. It's so nice and quiet. It's just, she always say that to me. I don't give a damn what you think, or you either. I said that way. She said, it's so peaceful and so quiet it is. She said, but you need to slow down. I said, no, this is what keeps me alive when I work. I'll get some rest one day. One day I lay down over there, permanent, and I get all the rest I will need. But while I'm alive, I will drop before I stop. And that's a fact. Mm-mm. No son, no ma'am. Too much to do. He said, by the sweat of our pony, so I want mine to sweat. I want to sweat from here. Hallelujah. I, I want to conclude here tonight. Listen to this Yisra'ah. Amen. I want to give you the great key that that will subdue any kind of weariness. It's simple. You've read it before. But I want to take time to open up your understanding. We that are weary. In Yeshua, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 27. <clears throat> he says unto us, What do you say, O Yehob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from Yah. We think that we are on a different path than everyone else. And our circumstances are different than anyone. Don't we think that way? You just don't know. I tell folks, I don't want to hear you. I don't listen to people testify to me. I want to tell you my life. I say, no, sir. I don't let them do it. I, want, I say, yours look different than no one else. Well, I've been there. No, you know you haven't. You made yourself believe that. And yours not even compared to those that are in great agony. I said, I don't, I don't need to know that. Zorkain and I went out uh, after the Shabbat, and he was telling me to my man, I used to cook right there. I said, what? What do you mean you cooked? All these years that I didn't know you could work with a spatula? Oh, yeah. I would cook the mistake, and I put me one on two. I said, ah. How long did you cook? He's five years. I said, man, I mean, I, I <laughs> what? Huh? I didn't know he cook. Oh, yes, sir. So I can't, you, what? All these years. He's been, me, he's been with me a long time. I didn't know he cook. Because I never asked him. I don't know. I don't want to know what he's done. I don't care. It means nothing to me. But that surprised me. So, okay, now hold up, not that. Now, I'm thinking that he, he had worked at a place six months, three months, and MacDonald. No, sir. 
I was cooking that. Quincy's up there. I say, what? Cooked in Shoney's. Suck. I say, so that means you work with a steak there. Well, okay. I'll leave it at that then, all right? I won't mess with that. What? My way is hidden from Yah, and my judgment has, uh, it has passed over from the Almighty. Have you not known, have you not heard uh, that he is the everlasting Abba, Yahweh, uh, he is the Bara, the creator of the ends of the earth. Uh, he, don't, he doesn't get weary. He doesn't get weary. He doesn't faint. He doesn't, uh, he doesn't grow weary. He doesn't become exhausted. He doesn't tire. He doesn't get fatigued. fatigued. Nor Neither is he weary. There is no searching of his understanding. In essence, with all your life, you cannot find out the beauty and the strength of the Binah, the understanding of Almighty Yah. You cannot. And he says, Yah is the one that gives power unto us that are weak, that are faint, weary. And to us that have no might, he increase our strength. That's why he commands us, let the weak say, I'm strong. Poor, sir, I'm rich. He, those words alone gives us strength. That's what he says. He is the one that uh, gives us strength uh, and gives us power. Even the youth shall faint and they shall be weary. And the young men shall utterly kashal, stumble and fall because they're feeble. But this is the key right here. This is the key in the battle. This is the victory for us, Yisrael. There's one word as David, he said, I kava. I wait. I wait without murmuring or complaining. I don't charge you off foolishly. He says this in verse 31. But they that kava. If we just wait upon Yah, they shall khalaf, they shall renew. They shall be restored. They shall sprout again. They shall renew their strength. They shall mount up as wings as eagles. They shall run and they shall not be weary. See, if you just wait, you won't get weary. If you just wait, that's the key, Yisra'ya. It's no, it's no symphony, of course. It's just one simple thing. Chava. That's why David, I read that he said, uh, I am weary. I faint. My eyes fell he said, while I wait, that's the key. Just wait. Just wait. You cannot change one cube one thing by worry. Just wait by getting weary. Just wait. See if you just wait. Just wait. The battle, you won't get weary. You just, he says, just wait for they. He's going to renew our strength. We, we shall run and shall not be weary. We shall not be weary if we just wait and we shall walk and we're not going to yaaf. We're not going to faint. We're not going to be weary. Yisra, yae. We're not going to do that at all. We're not going to get weary if we just wait. Just wait. What? In the promises of Yah, in the Tikva. That's all we got to do. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just, that's it. Just wait. Just be patient. Don't get impatient. You can't search out his understanding. You don't understand what he's doing. And all of the great trials of Abraham, uh, he was faithful. He did not get weary. Why? Because he loved what Yah, he knew that everything was in Yah's hand. Put it all in his hands, as we would say. Leave it in his hands. Don't put it in there and take it out. But that's a simple thing. Just wait if we wait on Yah. My final khatu uh, tonight, I want to read this. Shaul leaves a word of great inspiration unto to those that are Thessalonians, Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians. This is the charge I leave with you, as Shaul did. Second Thessalonians, chapter three, verse thirteen. But unto you, Yisrael, Achim, you bath of Tizayon, your daughters of Imona. And Shaul writes Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians, three thirteen. He said, but you, the faithful Achim of Yisrael, be not weary in well-doing. 
just don't get weary. You're doing well. In the midst of your battle, just don't turn away. Don't rebel. Don't turn back to the world. Don't get weary. You're doing well. In the midst of all of your weakness, you faint and all of that. Don't turn back. Don't go astray from you. Don't rebel against what he says. That's all you have to do. Just don't get weary. Things are going well. And things are going to be well. So don't get weary. Don't faint. Well, you don't know the battle I had, but it's a small thing. It's a small thing. There's nothing much to keep you awake at night about. Nothing keeps me awake. Nothing. I don't care what it is. It's a small thing. So, don't get weary and well doing. He's doing well. He's been well to us tonight. He's given us a well balanced piece of bread tonight. Has everything, just that piece of bread, you're sure. God lets him have everything you need. And everything that you need, all the resources and all the great vitamins and nutrients are there for you. Just don't get weary. You're doing well. You know your sins, you confess them, you're doing well. Don't get weary. In the agony of all your battles of doubt, just don't get weary. Just wait. Just stand still and just see the power of his Yosha, Yeshua Hamashiach. May the riches of Almighty Yah rest upon you all, Yisrael, and may the assurance of his Torah fill your heart with great delight, and may you rejoice in the abundance of his riches and blessings in Yeshua. And may he cause your heart to grow fat. You that have joined us, do assist and help. Send an offering, your tithe, your offering. No, don't let these liars tell you you don't pay tithes. They're done away with. Send help. We need it. We really do, all right? We need it for the broadcast to stay on, on the, st the stay live. That's not free. You that are sitting there watching, that's not free. We got to pay for that. I said to one, check out the price of a T2 line in your area. The little fellow down there in Atlanta, he, he, I sent his money back, so he said, that's it, I'm done with you. I, I'm glad you are, man. Now, he may be listening tonight. I, mean, I said, I don't want your money. I will never take a dime of yours, of all people. I don't want nothing from you. Send it to someone else. It's amazing because they, they can't get nothing nowhere else. I talked to a brother today, and he says to me, Ray, I just love to hear your voice. Huh? And he doesn't tell you he loves you. I say, when a man tells you he loves you, when a man tells another man he loves you, that's, that's strength there. Because we're not just wired that way. We're not prone to do that. Women want to hear I love you. I'll stop it. But he said, Riyaka, you know, I don't say this to you, but I love you, my friend. He said, you know what? And this man, as far as the enterprise of the world, as far as intelligent, as far as intelligent properties, this man, I mean, who we went to his house my wife and I mean, it was so big. I'm like, man, what do you need all this? Well, the door looked like they were tall as the ceiling. Man. Huge place where they got it. It's insane. And he said, you know, Ray, I, he said, all my life, I didn't learn anything in school. The teachers couldn't teach me nothing because I, I, I didn't learn anything. I, he said, just, they could not teach me anything. He said, you're the only man that I can say, and that's why I love you. You have taught me, and you have taught me. And this man has been so faithful. It's beyond faithful. It's beyond insanity, his faithfulness to the work. And he proves that. Hallelujah. So, Yah has given me the tongue of the Lamul, of the learned man, that I may speak a word to you tonight in your weary nature. Be strong, rise up. Your shield shall lead the way. Let us stand to our feet. Bless you all, Israel. Our friends, we do Baruch you for joining us. In all things, we turn toward Yerushalayim. Your blessings and riches upon your nation, your protection over the house, your staying and keeping power upon us all. We ask in your Yeshua's name, preserve your nation, your people, and keep us in the way, in the heart of your Yeshua, that we become lovers of our Hamashiach. We ask all in your Yeshua's mighty name, heal your nation, keep, bless Yerushalayim as we baruch and touch all of your people, heal us all in your Yeshua's name. Hallelujah. 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 Yabrak, nation of, yeah, bless you all on the live broadcast with us.